And all that is like looking both ways before you cross the street and then getting hit by a new Anybody ever feel that way? I feel that way every day. Right? All right. Number three. You don't know what a wetland looks like, guys. Neither does the paralegal that you're working with. She doesn't know what a wetland looks like either. You know, they changed this spec in 2016 or 2014, whenever it was they changed it, and they changed this. Yeah, now it's wetland markers, right? Yeah. yeah. Do I know what a wetland looks like? If it's green and wet, what do I call it? A wetland. Right? Because, like, look, if I'm a land surveyor and I got any doubt on whether or not that's a wetland, what am I going to call it? Okay. Because that's the safe thing to do. So I got a bunch of land tile surveys were running around out there with a bunch of wetlands on there that were like where the sprinkler was too wet. Okay? What's the problem with calling something a wetland that isn't a wetland? Why is it even on the office spec? Does anybody know? There's an issue from a land use perspective. I would think that environmental restrictions yeah. can use those. Yeah. First of all, we live in California. If you have a wetland anywhere on your property, what can you do with it? Nothing. Absolutely. Pretty much. Right? So wetlands are a big deal. You also have the United States, which can have jurisdiction over federal waters, if it's hydraulically, hydro, whatever that word is, connected to a navigable body of water. Wetlands are a big deal. Big deal. Like, you can bulldoze a wetland and go to jail. But it's a big deal. Okay? So, should I be calling something a wetland that isn't a wetland? No. So, if they check, how many times do they check that box on the table lid? Every time. They check it every time. So here's, what do you got to tell your client if they check the wetland table A? Yeah, what is, who is the biologist or environmental consultant that you're going to hire to go out and mark the wetlands? Because all you can do is survey the paint or the flags. That's, why, that's it. Somebody out there is qualified to figure out what a wetland looks like. It is not me. Okay? So this came up on a job. I was all the way done with the land title survey. We were taking care of the last of the lenders' comments. And the, the attorney for the bank, so I had, a, this is crazy, I had all, there was an attorney for the buyer, there was an attorney for the seller, and there was an attorney for the buyer's bank. So three attorneys. So the attorney for the buyer's bank, we're all the way done. She says, I want you to add the wetlands table A to the cert. This is like a, a friggin' Macy's shopping center. Now, all she knows is that it's on her checklist, right? Mm -hmm. So I called her, I said, it's a Macy's shopping center, right? I'm like, you're holding up, a, my, my client's screaming bloody murder, because this is, this is property in Menlo Park. What do you think is an office park in Menlo Park, park is worth? Mm -hmm. Right? I got millions, right? And like, we're holding the deal up, and she wants the wetlands table A item on a survey. So I told her, I said, it's a shopping center. She says, it's on my checklist. I don't fund the loan unless it gets on there. This is what, what time, day of the week and time do you think this is? Friday. Friday at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. It wasn't 5, but it was close. I said, hey, who's the environmental consultant you're going to send out to mark the wetlands? She's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't know what a wetland looks like, lady, and I don't have to do it anymore. The spec says. Okay? Now, I caved on my principles. because I didn't want to hold up a $50 million deal, and I knew there wasn't any wetlands on the site. So here's what I did. I added it to the cert, but I put a note on there that said, based on my option, I don't do this. This is a bad example, <laughs> but I'm just explaining it. I put a note on there that said, uh, based on the field work, I didn't observe anything that I think looks like a wetland, but I'm not qualified to make that determination. I'm no joke, that's what's on the map. And she took it. But I shouldn't, yeah, because what I was trying to do there was solve a problem for my client, but I didn't like it. It made me feel like I cheated. Okay? So it's not just wetlands. So I have a list of some other things that we need to think about. So, yes? Wetlands, what about your firm hiring the wetlands? So, yeah, that's fine. If they want to, yeah, they can pay for it. We'll hire them all. So that's two hours. That's no problem. Yes, Nick? Uh, zoning report is important. I think it says in Way it's like, is it provided by yeah. the but, but, Yeah, by the way, if you guys don't get a zoning report, you don't do setbacks anymore. And they never provide it. And they never do! Yeah. They always end up, where's my setbacks? Where's my zoning report? Let's do this. There's right? no, no zoning report provided by the client. We'll get a link to the county's website. Yeah, figure it out. Right? Listen, those guys 
hardest fighting force in the room, they need free beer. Because they're doing a good job. They changed that too. That got changed in 2016. Because they used to make the surveyor plot the setbacks. And like, here's the problem with plot setbacks. Try and read the county zoning code or city zoning code and figure out what's the front and the back on a corner lot. Right? Okay, so come on in, sit down if you want. We're making fun of everybody. All right, so I'm gonna just run you through some table A items that could potentially cause problems if you don't know what you're doing besides weapons. Okay, we're just gonna run down the list real quick. Item number two, addresses. If you're probably okay, cite your source. So if they check table item number two, I want addresses, that's fine, put addresses on there, but tell people where you got the addresses. Okay, so was it, and I tell my guys, if you're on the site and you see a number on the building, Take a picture of it. I don't care if it's graffiti. If somebody graffitied a number graffitied a number twelve on that building, I want a picture. Okay? Keep those in your file. Okay? How many times do you think I found an address on a building that doesn't match what's on the tax assessor data? Oh, all the time. All the time. It happens all the time. So here's the problem with addresses. An address could, could ID a parcel. It could ID a building. It could ID a door on a building. It could ID a room inside of a building. Okay? Now, let me tell you why addresses are tricky. Let me see if I can find it. Let me go through this and we're going to come back to addresses. By the way, I've, I've been an expert witness in a lawsuit over somebody that bought property referenced to an address that wasn't the property they thought. So you think, oh, table A, my, I mean, number two, no problem. Just Google Maps, just Google Maps that bad boy. Hey, sir, they check, they don't Google Maps with an address on it. Be careful. Be careful. Okay, item six setbacks we talked about. Item seven, exterior square footage of buildings at ground level. Now, I'm not telling you you can't do that, but I'm going to give you some things to think about. Any of y'all architects? Probably not. So let's just go over some questions. Um, so, I'm, so I'm not saying you can't do it, but be careful. Cite your source and explain your methods. So I've got some questions for you. What's ground level? Did they tell you in the spec? No. What if you're, I'm going to give you an idea of a site. I'm going to show you a site. So here's the slope. Slope site. We don't have any of those in the Bay Area, do we? <laughs> Guys from Fresno are like, we don't have a slope ground level. That's not hard. Well, yeah, it's because everything on here is flat. Right? Okay, well, here's, not here's flat, level. 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 The wrong word. The wrong word? Oh, okay, well, I say flat, but level's okay too. All right, here's a building. There's two stories. Okay. Well, let me draw this up. It goes over a little bit over like this. So, uh, now, look, I'm going to just mess with you a little bit. Let's say it's cantilever. What are you showing? I tell you what, if you're going to do, if you're going to do uh, whatever item that is, seven, you better have some pictures in your file and you better put a note on your back that says what you did. Like, I don't know, what's the square footage? Is it, what do you want? Do you want this little, this is smaller than this. And ground level here is going to be different than ground level up here. I mean, it's just, you know, you get a multi-level building, you have to think about that stuff. I'm going to give you another quick example on buildings. I had a building that was like this, and it came out, here was the main building, and then there was a covered, a covered walkway, right? And then it came out here, they had like a gazebo thing where they barbecued and stuff. I'm like, this was enclosed. Is that a separate building with its own square footage? Does it go in this building's square footage? Do I count what's under the covered walkway? I don't know. Does the spec tell you? So you got to make a judgment call there. You better write it down. Put a note on your map. So just be careful with that. Uh, parking. My favorite thing. We care about parking in the Bay Area? What do you think? Do you realize that the number of parking spaces on a project in the Bay Area can sink, make or break a project? Like, that's how important parking spaces are over there. And every time I do an office survey in the Bay Area, the client wants me to certify the parking. Okay, so here's some questions. What do you do with street side parking? Mm -hmm. Do you count that? I don't know. You know what I do? I put street side parking in a separate column. Separate town, separate road. Hey, there's four street side spaces there. Sometimes that street side parking's on the property. But it's street side. So? Um, I, don't, I don't have an answer for you, sorry. Big disappointment, but you gotta think about it, right? Street side parking, what about loading bays? Or motorcycle parking, or ride share drop off. Now they've never just got an Uber slot. 
So my answer is you just put exactly what it is on the map. That like don't have a total. Oh, there's 52 parking spaces, but 42 of them are for motorcycles. Like that could get you sued. Does that make sense? Okay. Item number 11, underground utilities. How many of you guys are utility locators? A couple of, couple of hundred raises his hand. Yeah. Richard, do you do some utility locating? So I've been running a market locate department now for a couple of years. I have learned so much about utilities, underground utilities in the last two. That is like its own beast, right? And so like my advice to you on item number 11 is know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. should probably, if they really want 11, so I want you guys to know in 2016 they changed the spec. You have to show all the service utilities now. That's not an option. It has to be on there. They changed the spec and said if you want underground stuff, you got to pull the, you got to pull the records. There's two options. You can pull the records, record drawings, or you can hire a locator. Okay? You better explain specifically what you did on the title survey. And do you ever say we found all the underground utilities? No, don't ever say that, right? So just be careful with number 11. Uh, item number 12 is HUD BLM requirements. I've never done that. Has anybody ever done HUD or BLM? You did a HUD? Okay. They had a bunch of nonsense. They wanted, basically like you said, to certify that there's absolutely nothing under the right. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know, but like, you better read whatever it is they want. Just like, read, read it, read the HUD stuff. We, we let it be checked with a little asterisk on it, basically saying that we didn't actually do that. Like, we certify. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, cool. All right, so Nick's done it. I've never done it. Um, I can't remember what item 17 is. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a table in front of me. I don't remember what item 17 is. I just say cite your source. Um, item number 18 um, is wetlands. We talked about wetlands. There, there used to be a table laid out that they took out in 2016. It was, uh, I, it was like use of a landfill. And they took that out. You know why? Because every time a surveyor saw an old tire in a McDonald's bag, what did he say? Yeah. Landfill. Because you've got to be like, right, better safe than sorry, right? So they finally took that out. They said surveyors don't know what landfill. We don't know what wetlands look like. We don't know what landfills look like. Just take it out. Okay? By the way, if you really want to know about the environmental problems on a potential property, there is a way to get that done. And it's not a title survey. What is it? Who do you hire? Yeah, there's like a whole thing, a whole industry that does just that stuff. So if you're a land surveyor, should you be doing that crap? Probably not, not unless you're hiring the right person. Okay, so just be careful. I call them non-survey table A's. I need somebody, I'm gonna to talk too much and we're gonna go late. Hey, boss. Yep. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna just let you read this. I'm gonna have you guys read something real quick. I brought and uh, I'll send you guys these files. So this is an email, because I want to talk, talk about addresses, I'm going to just send this to you guys. I'll show you, oh, you're not going to let me read the PDF. There's no PDF reader on here. Just open it with Chrome or something. Yeah, let's see, let's try it. Holy it's not my laptop, so we might be those. Program. Years ago, when I, when I was doing ALT, World Golf Marine OTAs, I took the standards and I had in Word, I, I think I might have even had to convert them to Word, but anyway, to provide in Word now. And I put them in an Excel spreadsheet, sentence by sentence, with gaps in between. Mm -hmm. I went out with that old surveyor, Mark Lewis, who just passed on, who's a president of grad too, a little bit younger than me, but it's like, I'm going to be out of here for forever. Yeah. So I can't find that. Oh, let me read the slide, and then I'll tell you what was in the email. Those moments when you hope your party chief sass will help them leave the company, not a prison game. Anybody ever feel like that? <laughs> the original quote says, "Your kid, like, that's like my party chief. Like, you're either going to prison or you're going to be a really great surveyor." <laughs> okay. So this at this email that I had, there was a property in San Francisco, and there was all kinds of land use restrictions on this parcel. Okay. 
and a bunch of these documents that impose the land use restrictions just cited an address. No APN, no land description. So like I got somebody at the planning department that isn't a surveyor and they're like, oh, I have to throw a street address on there. Okay, so here's the problem. That was in my list of exceptions in the title report. Oh, there's half a dozen of these documents. And I put on there, not plotable, not survey, not, not survey matter, not plotable. And the paralegal was flipping her lid. She said, you have to plot these on there. I said, all it has is an address. She said, well, put it on there anyways. I said, the parcel doesn't even have that same address anymore. So this was a lot that had one address when all these things were, now it was condos or high-rise apartments, multiple buildings. So they're like, each building had an address, and then there was a bunch of other addresses. With, so I told her, I said, I don't know what that land use, does it apply to the whole parcel? Does it apply to just the common area? Does it apply to the two buildings? Does it only apply to one of the buildings? Like, what's the problem with using addresses for land use documents, right? So here's what I ended up doing. I caved again, caved on my principles. And I put some funky note on there that said, hey, this parcel used to have one address, and that may have been the time when these documents were prepared. I have no idea where it currently applies. And I put the note on there, she checked the box. But you gotta be careful. Addresses change, right? So you can be careful with it. Okay? Hopefully your party chief doesn't leave prison again. All right. I, um, know, I know you're running out of time, but yep. have you ever had to write a letter that says, like, like I don't want an ALTA, I just need a letter that says there's no encroachment. I've never wrote that. Have you? I've been asked to. Yeah, I've never wrote that. Showed examples by all the other surveyors. Yeah. You know, if they had a big enough bag of money, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. And I mean, I wrote a letter that said, like, there's a road that's approximately 14 feet over the south boundary. There's yeah, I mean, I might do that. And then I was asked to add a note that says the final map's going to resolve that issue. No. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to be careful. You know, if they're worried about that, then you need a map that just shows the road and yeah. you can make no decision. I yeah. Mean, well, like, good client, but, yeah. you know, you're trying to save my green. You know, Antonio, I would do a lot for money. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on how much money they have, right? But, yeah, I don't do very much for no money. I know. Yeah. I know. It's a liability thing, really. Yeah, liability, too. Yeah. Okay.